All right, beautiful people. In studio with us, always the best dressed man in the room because there's just a couple of us in the room. <laughs> uh, Mr. Brian Johnson of Valley Mortgage, today's uh, sponsor, and of course, one of our favorite guests. So, good morning, BJ. How's life? Good morning, Eric. Great. Things are going good. good. Summer's How- here. How's your golf game so far? I've only played once, you know, and it's a work in progress, as always. <laughs> uh, Brian, we get to golf together a few times each summer because, you know, business. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, um, how would you describe my golf game to the listeners? You know, I think you put a ball down quicker than anyone I've seen <laughs> after you hit your first shot to hit a second shot. Well, I will give you that. If you're out there, like, why do you want to finish quickly? Like, don't you want to get more strokes in so you you get your money's worth? Practice makes perfect. Yeah, uh, I've been practicing a lot, and I am far <laughs> from perfect. So, yeah, you are you are wrong on that, BJ. Uh, uh, for folks listening who don't know who you are, give us a little synopsis of uh, Brian Johnson and Valley Mortgage. Sure, I'm Brian Johnson. I'm oh, Valley, Valley Mortgage. That's, hey, the very nice. In, right? Yeah. Uh, We've been in business since 1983. We serve uh, the Valley, all of Fargo-Moorhead, all of North Dakota and Minnesota. We do home loans. Uh, we specialize in first-time home buyer loans, conventional, FHA, VA, USDA, um, jumbo loans. Uh, a lot of people don't even know what that means. So break that down in even simpler terms because uh, you do a lot of different loans. But uh, mm-hmm. if I'm any Joe Schmo, can I come and get a mortgage? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come see us and we'll... You know, try to find the best option for you. Go over all of your options. Explain all the different loan programs and loan types that are out there. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what if my credit score is blech and I don't have any money to put down? Sure. Then we take a look <laughs> and kind of evaluate some options. We may coach you on what you need to do to get your credit mm-hmm. up to uh, being able to get approved uh, for a home loan. So typically speaking, most people um, need to have at least a 620 credit score or okay. higher in order to get approved. Case by case basis, we can go a little bit lower than that, um, just depending on what your situation is. But a lot of times we'll coach people and be able to give them some solid advice on how to get their credit ready or to get it higher to get them a better interest rate. So I always say it's great to take a look at your credit, review all of your finances six months to a year before you're ready to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't mean you have to do that, but um, it's a good idea to get a I, you know, a good idea of what your credit looks like ahead of time. So, uh, Brian, I have to bring this up because I'm still a little bit salty about it. Uh, mm-hmm. I refinanced my house with you after we did a, a, a construction project on it. Uh, and so we refinanced last year mm-hmm. and you were kind enough to give me my credit score and, and I was pleased with my credit score. And then you gave me my wife's credit score and her credit score was higher than mine. Um, <laughs> I'm still angry. Uh, why in the world does she have a better credit score than me? Because um, I'm older and I pay the majority of our bills. Shouldn't I have the best credit score and she should just be, you know, like second to me? Because I, I want to be first. You know, that happens quite a bit where <laughs> <laughs> the wife has better credit. So it may be a number of things. She may have some more store cards, for instance, and has a Stop cards. calling my wife out on air, Brian. <laughs> now you're going to get me in so much you know, trouble. I don't know if every Eve has a credit card yeah. yet, but maybe they should, right? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> if, if she's anything like my wife. So anyway, if she's got <laughs> some store cards. You were so <laughs> quiet on that. And yes, you said so much. <laughs> Okay, so store cards are are not necessarily detrimental. That's what they're you're not. If you can balance them, and if you pay them off, or if you keep a low balance. So typically, mm-hmm. people with the higher credit scores have um, balances under forty percent of their limit. Okay, they also pay their bills before they're due. Um, so, tip- so do I, Brian. <laughs> a lot of people wait till <laughs> the, the due date. They'll pay it maybe a day or two before. Okay, people with the eight hundred credit scores, as soon as they get the bill, they pay it. So okay. it's it's their. 10 days, 15 days before it's due. So that's some quick trips, tips, how to get a higher credit score. Uh, I appreciate that. And Emily, if you're listening, um, I'm coming for you. Uh, (laughs) I'm going to get that higher credit score. We're going to beat her next time. (laughs) That's right. Uh, Brian, there has been a a shakeup in the industry as of late uh, and and a shakeup probably to benefit buyers and sellers. And it happened over in the land of wonderful pasta in -hmm. Italy. Uh, What in the world is going on and how are people locally and uh, nationally affected? You know, that's a really good thing. This last week, we had a little bit of shakeup in the bond market just because of what's going on in Europe. There's a little bit of instability. So um, 
what happened for us is interest rates started to decrease a little bit just because there's some uncertainty what's going to happen there. So um, investors were taking money out of the stock market. You saw the mm-hmm. Dow Jones drop a few hundred points earlier in the week. And then they flooded them into safer assets, so mortgage-backed securities, um, the 10-year treasury, for example, which drove things down a little bit. So we got a little bit of relief in interest rates. So it affects our local market greatly because people can get a better deal on their home loan. Okay. Uh, I, I, I haven't looked to see specifically where we're at. We're still in the low fours for interest rates, are we not? Low to mid fours for a 30-year. Yep. Okay. And 15 are... Generally, just below four. Typically, it's about a half a percent lower. Okay. Um, and you touched upon it. You said you said. If, I mean, it's it's a literal thing that a fifteen a year loan or a thirty year loan that those are the difference is fifteen years, right? Mm-hmm. And the other difference is you're at a lower interest rate. But how much money would you save essentially if you did a fifteen year today as opposed to a thirty year? Let's say a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage. You'd save quite a bit. I couldn't do the math. Yeah, well, and I, I don't expect you to be the rain man of, of mortgages here today, Brian, but I, I do think that uh, we pay a lot in interest. Yeah, we do. And, and even with interest rates low in the, in the high threes, low fours, uh, and that's better than it normally is, mm-hmm. uh, on a 30-year mortgage on a $200,000 house, you end up paying, what? Three or four hundred thousand dollars in interest, right? Nearly, right, nearly four hundred thousand in in principal and interest. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so half of everything that you pay is to the bank for fees and mm-hmm. for them carrying it, and the other half is towards paying down your mortgage, right? Right. But it doesn't start that way, right? We're on an amortization schedule, and what does that mean? Because it's one of those big fancy words that I think us geeks in the industry know about, but I think that uh, the the public needs to know what happens with their money from day one to day three thousand. And one. Right. Well, it's a sliding scale. So if you have a 30 year fixed mortgage and you have a hundred thousand dollar loan, let's say you're at six percent for easy math, your principal and interest payment is six hundred dollars a month. Okay. Well, generally speaking, for the first few months, you're paying very little towards principal. The first few years, essentially. First few years, yeah. right? So you may be paying sixty or seventy dollars a month towards principal, and it's a sliding scale, and it gradually gets bigger and bigger where at the end of the term, when you're at payments, you know, 350 to 360. Now, all of a sudden, you're paying the bulk of your principal. Because the bank will make sure that they're getting paid on their risk. Right. Right. If you think about it, you buy a $100,000 house, again, using that simple math, and you put down 5%, the bank owns 95% of that house. Mm Mm-hmm. And you own five. And so the more you're able to put down, the less risk you have. Uh, and I went with a 15-year recently with you, Brian. The payment is a little more steep in mm-hmm. terms of cash up front, but I'm going to be done in 15 years. Yep. Time flies. <laughs> it's going to go quick. Uh, it will. Uh, before my kids graduate, I'm going to be done. Oh, that's That felt weird to say. <laughs> you're getting old and it's like me, right? Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> Brian, if folks want to learn more about uh, their opportunities to buy, to refinance, or to, to take advantage of today's market, how do they get in contact with you? Give us a call at our office, 701-461-8450. Visit us online at valleymortgageinc.com or come see us at 3315 45th Street South in Fargo. I love it. Brian Johnson, Valley Mortgage, uh, the most attractive man in the mortgage industry in the room right now. Uh, so, Brian, thanks so much. Folks, we're going to go to break. Head to liftfargomorehead.com and find out what your home is worth. This is Real Estate Radio with Eric Hatch.